Hello YouTube. Today I'm sharing my triple threat bread with you. The reason it's called triple threat is because you use yeast, baking powder, and sourdough starter. Right now I'm going to first start out first with feeding my sourdough starter. I usually only feed it three tablespoons of flour, two tablespoons of water, but I'm going to double that because I am going to use a pretty good bit of the starter today. Uh, what I do is I feed it slowly every day, so I'm not having to throw out starter. So I'll feed it a little every day. Three tablespoons of flour, two tablespoons of water, mix it up. That way it stays active and we're not having to throw starter away. So I don't like the part of having to, uh, you feed it larger amounts, but you're also throwing a lot away. This shows you how active it is. You see all the bubbles on the side of the jar. If it's not forming those bubbles in the jar like that, then your breads are not going to be very light and fluffy either. They're going to be more packy. Uh, by letting doughs rise multiple times, that's what makes them light and airy. So we're going to add our, since we're doubling it, we're going to add four tablespoons of water. And we're going to take a little small whisk that's actually uh, coated in silicone, it's a silicone coated whisk, and we'll whisk it up. It's just a little bit easier to clean when it's coated in silicone. Uh, you don't want to let this sourdough uh, starter dry anywhere. It could have been used for cement because it's very hard to clean, actually. I, uh, at least once a week put my dough over into a new jar and it'll take it an hour or two to soak before I can get the old crusties out of the old jar. If you don't have a sourdough starter going, you can see my video on how to start sourdough. Like I said, the way I do it is an easy way where you're just feeding a small amount and you're not wasting any flour. The things that are going on today with the shortage of flour and yeast and products to eat. You don't need to waste anything. And we really shouldn't be wasteful anyway. Okay, once we've got our sourdough fed, we're going to wait a minimum of two hours, preferably three, for it to become active again. And then we're going to make our dough up. The dough that I make up it has potatoes in it, and I do like to make it up the night before. I just think it does better. The potatoes actually condition the dough and soften it and just help it do a little bit better uh, during the rising process. The yeast and you know, the wild yeast, the dry yeast, all that feeds off of those starches. Uh, this is what it looks like three hours later. You can see that it's risen up a little bit in the jar and it's starting to form all these nice air bubbles in the jar. And now we can start making our bread. See how frothy it looks on the top. And when you've got light of, lots of air bubbles like that, that's what it's going to do in your bread, and it's going to make it light. Uh, this bread that we're going to make, and this dough we're making up, it actually tastes pretty close to store ball. Uh, we're starting out with two cups of all-purpose flour and a cup and a half of whole wheat flour. So this is about a 50% whole wheat flour. I'm adding a quarter cup of sugar. We're going to start getting our dry ingredients in. We're also going to add some yeast, baking powder, and salt. I'm using a teaspoon and a half of salt. And I use a teaspoon and a half of yeast, but you could actually even drop that back to a teaspoon if you're trying, trying to reserve your yeast. By using three different components to get your bread rising, it's just going to be a lighter, fluffier bread. Put my one teaspoon in, then grab my half teaspoon and use it to measure out one and a half teaspoons. We're also going to add our baking powder, and then you used a teaspoon and a half of baking powder also. And get our mixer down, lock it in, 
and turn it on to get all those dry ingredients incorporated. Once we get that incorporated, we're going to start adding our wet ingredients. The first wet ingredient that we're going to add <coughs> into our mixture. Oh, this is my, I want to talk about my, how I do my potatoes. What I do is I take a medium sized potato, peel it, and dice it up. I put uh, three to three and a half cups of water in on it, and I boil it on the stove. When it cools, when they're done, it cools, I pour it into a wide mouth pork, then I take my hand mixer, and I pulverize those potatoes or mash them up, and, leave, and then I leave it in a quart jar. Uh, this just gives me something to use if I can keep in the refrigerator. Now, I'm not having to boil potatoes every time I want to make any kind of breads or rolls or anything. It's easy just to go grab it and use out of it. So that's what that is. I had it already in a jar. And it's just a potato that's been cooked and mashed. And we reserve the potato water. Potato water contains a lot of starch that can be used in your bread. What I've done is I've got all my ingredients all lined up and ready to go. Uh, that just makes things a little bit easier. This is our half a cup of oil. We're going to turn on our mixer and add it in. Then we'll add our eggs, our sourdough. So we've got all our dry ingredients in. All that's left is adding our sourdough, our oil, our eggs, and a little bit of water. We're only going to add the amount of water that we need. And we're only going to add maybe two or three ounces by the time we add our potato water. Uh, we add our eggs, we add our sourdough, we're not going to need that much liquid because we're adding the liquid from the other items. We're going to stop our mixer uh, to add our sourdough because uh, it would just made a mess all over the mixer. So I wanted to get it added in without getting it everywhere because when this stuff dries, I'm telling you, it could have been cement. Uh, it's just very hard to clean off, so make sure if you do Spill it or get it on anything to get it wiped off before it hardens. I'm using my finger to get it in there. And uh, used approximately about two thirds of a cup. As you can see, I don't really do accurate measurements. Uh, it's not that important to be that precise on exact amount of sourdough because uh, you're going to add. The, the amount of water you need is never going to be uh, it, the exact. So you've got to learn to, with baking bread, that you add your water in slowly. So once our sourdough gets incorporated in the dough, uh, then we can add our water slowly. And like I said, we use warm water also, probably around 100 to 110 degrees. Uh, this is our potato mixture going in. See, we're adding a lot of liquid, so it's not going to need much water. I probably added maybe two and a half ounces was it. So start with two ounces and or less, and just add a little bit at a time. In fact, I almost added too much, so be very careful with how much water you add. Uh, once this gets incorporated, we are going to let our mixer uh, knead it for three or four minutes. Uh, this bread doesn't require a whole lot of kneading because we are going to let it sit in the refrigerator overnight. It's going to do a lot of the work for you by sitting in the refrigerator. And this is nice. Like I said, you can mix this up ahead of time and get it out when you need it. Now, the rising process does take some time. So you are going to need uh, approximately at least, I would say, four to five hours to allow it to rise. A lot of the items we added in were cold or cool, they weren't warm, so it is going to have to come up to at least room temp before it starts acting or rising. Uh, in the baking world, this is called proofing. But what we're going to basically do is we're going to, we're only going to use about, I used about two thirds of this, but my loaf pan is pretty large. For a regular size, say 7 to 8 inch loaf pan, you would only use about half of the dough to make a loaf of bread. So see, this would make two nice sized loaves of bread. And this bread does come out nice and soft and light. In part two, I'm going to show you what it looked like in the picture, what it looked like when it was risen and we had it in the pan. But part two, I'll show you how to 
uh, get the bread prepared to go into a loaf. We're going to have to knead it, let it rise, and then we're going to knead it down again and let it rise. We're going to knead it down again and let it rise in a bowl. And then you're going to spray your pan and prep it to go in a pan. Okay, this is a airtight container. These are called lock and lock containers that I'm using to store the dough in in the refrigerator overnight. Like I said, our next video, number two, will show you how to prep the bread, whether you were making uh, bread out of it or even rolls, you would still go through the proofing process. This is what makes your bread lighter and fluffier. You're actually stretching the glutens and working all that so your bread isn't a packy dough. Uh, which makes a not very nice bread that you're trying to eat. I had to do some trial and error with making bread and learn that you can't just make up the dough and let it sit. Uh, it'll do okay for pizza doughs, just kind of pushing it out and in the position and the shape that you want it. Uh, but for bread that you're going to want to eat, uh, the dough stuck into my hands and it is still a little bit wet. Not going to be a real dry dough so i sprayed my hand with some cooking spray to help <clears throat> get it out of the bowl and then get it in the container that we're going to store it in and when your hand is oily the dough won't stick to it so what we'll do is we'll put it in the container then i'll use my hand and kind of press it down where it's uh, flat in the bottom of the container because it is going to rise up and fill this container. Also spray the top of the dough. Uh, this keeps it from drying out. It shouldn't dry out in a lock and lock container, but uh, by spraying it with a little bit of oil, it makes it easier to work with. And you don't have to worry about it sticking. I did spray the top of the container also. Okay guys, we're done. This is going to go in the refrigerator overnight. This is what our product, end product is going to look like before we put it in the oven, so stay tuned. And we'll do number two. This is the pressure prepper, and I'm out.